So last class we have seen the uh, no load and block to rota test. And slide is visible. Yes, sir. Now we will solve one problem uh, in no load and block to rota test. So please take down this problem. We have 400 volt, 40 HP, 50 hertz, 4 pole star connected induction motor. A B following test data. So no load test, 400 volt, 20 ampere. Thousand two hundred watts. So that is the data they got during no load test. And four hundred is the rated voltage. I already told you that no load test usually it is conducted for rated voltage. And no load current it is coming around twenty ampere. And no load power it is coming thousand two hundred watts. Then coming to the block to rotor test. Uh, 45 ampere the short circuit current that is the rated current short circuit current so for that current the voltage drawn by the motor is 100 volt and short circuit power is 2800 watt so compute the induction motor parameter so that is the question compute the induction motor parameter and of course it is sent to the rated side uh, if unless otherwise anything is mentioned it is normally referring to the rated side so compute the induction motor parameter referring to the rated side please come in time your class time is 11.20 so I am giving 10 minutes extra also to join for the class. So why you are coming in between and disturbing the class? So then after computing the induction motor parameters, draw the approximate equivalent circuit refer to the status side. And please assume the slip is 5 percent. And then you have to compute the current power under short circuit condition for rated voltage. Okay. That is nothing but ISN and WSN. ISN is the current under short circuit condition for rated voltage. WSN is the power under short circuit condition for rated voltage. So, um, this is what we compute. So we have to use the formula See, please come in time for the class. Otherwise don't come. Okay. Don't disturb uh, the class in between. So, so first we need to compute the four resistance and magnetizing reactance. So we have to take the formula four resistance and magnetizing reactance formula we have already derived. Four resistance is nothing but no load voltage phase value divided by loss component of the current phase value IC. So V naught phase divided by V naught phase divided by so V naught phase divided by I P is nothing but I naught cos phi naught.
again I am sharing the slide. So RC is nothing but V naught by IC, all should be in phase value. So the machine is star connected. The voltage phase value, you know, you have to take um, dividing the line value by root 3. I already told you that unless otherwise anything given in the problem, whatever voltage current value they are giving in the problem, it is the um, phase value. Sorry, it is the line value. So this is the problem. Yes. So so V naught phase, and this is the loss component of the current. So that is equal to I naught cos phi naught. Okay, all are in phase value, and the machine it is star connected. That is given in the problem. So, the no load voltage is 400 volts. I told you that unless otherwise it is mentioned, you have to take that value as line value. It is star connected. So, 400 you have to divide by root 3. And current remains the same. So, I naught is 20. And cos phi naught you can get from this formula. W naught, no load power is equal to root 3. V naught I naught cos phi naught and this V naught and I naught no that is a line value. Okay, because root 3 it is there. So root 3 V line I line cos phi naught. So cos phi naught is equal to we know W naught that is 1200 divided by root 3 400 into 20. If you want to write this in terms of phase, you have to use this formula. W naught is equal to 3 V naught phase I naught phase into cos phi naught. Both the formulas are same. Either you can use this formula or you can use this formula. So cos phi naught is coming around 0 0.0866. So you substitute cos phi naught here, you substitute cos phi naught here, this value. So you will get 133.34 ohm per phase. So this is your RC. Then you have to compute Xm. Xm the formula is V naught by Im. And V naught is 400 by root 3. IM is the magnetizing current that is given by I naught sin phi naught 400 by root 3 divided by 20 into sin phi naught you can compute from this value 0.9962 if you divide you are getting Xm is equal to 11.591 ohm per So, the shunt parameters we have computed the core resistance and magnetizing reactant. Since we are computing everything with respect to this data type, so RC and XM, no, it remains as such. Any doubt in this? Next we need to compute R1E. I told you that all the parameter we are finding with respect to this data site. So if that is the case, then R1E we need to compute. So R1E formula is short circuit power divided by 3 times square of the short circuit current. So directly you can substitute everything, 2800 divided by 345 square. So R1E, we are getting around 0 0.460 ohm per phase. Similarly, Z1G we can compute that is Vsc by ISC. 
so vsp is 100 that is line value you have to convert that into phase value which is star connected 100 by root 3 divided by 45 that is equal to 1.283 ohm per phase so using the value of r1e z1e we can compute the value of s1e s1e is equal to root of z1e the whole square minus r1e the whole square so you substitute and if you simplify you get is x1e as 1.197 ohm per phase and individually if you want to calculate the resistance of stator and rotor and reactance of stator and rotor so you can use some approximation what approximation we are doing here is that we are taking k is equal to 1 and we are assuming theta reactance is equal to the rotor reactance so r1e is nothing but r1 plus r2 dash x1e is nothing but x1 plus x2 dash and x1 is equal to x2 dash that is x1e by 2 if you assume k is equal to 1 then x1 is equal to x2 that is equal to 0.5985 ohm per phase right so from this you can get the values of x1 and x2 separately by assuming k is equal to 1 and similar way you can also get the values of r1 and r2 dash if you know the value of r1 here r1 value is not given so it is not possible to separately get the values for R1 and R2 dash. So you keep asset. So here any doubt anybody is having? And now the next question is we have to draw the equivalent circuit referring to this data site. So to draw the equivalent circuit, we know the value of RC. So that is written here. This is RC. This is your RC core resistance that we have already computed. And this is our XM. That is 11 ohm that we have already computed. Okay. And this is R1E that we have already computed. This is X1E that we have already computed. But the equivalent load resistance with respect to the mechanical load referring to this data is RL dash. So RL dash is nothing but R2 dash into 1 minus S by S. Clips they have given us 5 percentage, but we do not know the value of R2 dash. So you represent RL dash in terms of R2 dash. So, RL dash is equal to 19 R2 dash. So, this is the equivalent circuit. And next, we need to find the value of ISN. ISN is the short circuit current under rated voltage. The formula is VL divided by VSP into ISP. So, this is the rated voltage. This is the rated voltage. So rated voltage is 400. So please take the phase value 400 by root 3 divided by short circuit voltage is 100, 100 by root 3. If you simplify the short circuit current for the rated voltage 400 line value, we are getting around 180 ampere. Okay. And next we need to find the value for short circuit power under this is the short circuit power. This is the short circuit power under normal voltage or rated voltage. Here the normal voltage is 400 volt. This is the formula. This formula we have already seen. ISN by ISC the whole square into WSC. ISN we have already computed that is 180 ampere. ISC is the short circuit current that is 45 ampere for the voltage 100 volt multiplied by WSC is 2800. So this is the short circuit power under normal rated voltage of 400 volt. 
So this is the problem in no load and blocked rotor test. Any doubt? If you have any doubt, you can ask me. So with this, your unit one is completed. The last topic in unit one is circle diagram. Circle diagram nowadays it is not much properly used in induction motor. But what is the circle diagram? We will understand. The circle diagram is nothing but it is the graphical approach to determine the performance of the induction motor. Those days people were expertise in geometry, right? So those days people were very much expertise in pure geometry, circle, semicircle, square, parallel lines, parallelogram. In all those aspects, people were well versed in those days. And one person, he has developed a graphical method to determine the performance of the induction motor. Performance means efficiency, right? Copper loss, core loss, mechanical loss, all those are the performance of the induction motor. So you can determine the performance of the induction motor using graphical approach. The graphical approach is nothing but circle diagram. In order to determine the performance using graphical approach, we need to have the data obtained from no load test and block to rotor test. That is why no load and block to rotor test are very, very important tests that is used to, to draw the equivalent circuit and also to develop the circle diagram from which we can find the performance of the induction motor. Right? But the graphical approach is not much popularly used nowadays. People are directly using the equivalent circuit approach. From which people are finding the efficiency of the induction motor. Right? So that is why the circle diagram is not much dealt nowadays. Right? So it is the graphical method of predicting the performance of induction machine. To develop circle diagram, no load and block to rotor test data are used. So with this, your unit one is completed. This unit one, uh, what are all the things we have studied? Just I will summarize. First, we studied the conception of induction motor. Then we studied two types of rotor in induction motor. Then Working principle of induction motor we studied and the rotating magnetic field concept we studied. Then the effect of slip on the rotor parameters we studied. Then torque equation we studied. Torque slip graph we have drawn. Then power flow stages in induction motor we have studied. Then Test on induction motor we have studied. And in what are all the topics we have solved the problem? We solved the problem in torque equation. We solved the problem in power stage equation. I have given one homework problem on equivalent circuit. And we solved the problem in no load and block to rotor test. And of course, the effect of theta voltage variation and the rotor resistance variation on the torque slip curve also we have studied. So any doubt, if you have, you can ask me. Otherwise, we will go to the next unit. I will give some time. Any concept is not clear or any doubt you have, you can ask me. This PPT, 
I will share you. You can refer this PPT. Text to bit, you can refer BL Teresa that I have already told you. Shall we proceed to next unit? Unit two. Yes. Is that I am fast? You can tell me at this stage itself. Is that I am going fast or it is okay? Any feedback you have, you can share with me. Because yeah, that's what. Because between stage itself, no anything you have, you please share it to me. Ultimately, no. Mutually, uh, we need to. Understand ultimately, no, you, you need to understand that is the final game. Don't postpone the things that uh, don't tell me in the last unit that these that uh, don't tell me like that because it is of no use. Anything clarity is missing, any communication is missing, anything you have, you can please start now itself. So that it can be corrected, so that it will be delivered in an effective manner, so that you can understand in a much better way. Shall we go to unit two? Yes, sir. So you need to also we are going to read index information. You need to, what are all the topics we are going to cover is that, first, we need to study the starters for induction motor. We have already studied starters for DC motor. Same way we have starters for induction motor. So that is the first topic we are going to read. Okay. Then, Second topic is speed control of induction motor. Speed control of DC motor we have already seen. Same way we need to study the various methods of speed control in induction motor also. That is the second topic. Then third topic is Breaking of induction motor. The breaking in DC motor already we studied. So, same way we need to study the breaking of induction motor also. I hope the next slide is visible to you. You need to. You need to slide is visible or not? Visible, sir. Yes. So, unit two, we are going to cover these topics. So, first one is starting method. The second one, speed control method. Okay. The third one is breaking method.
then fourth one is induction generator we need to study then fifth one is there is one concept in induction motor crawling and coiling that we need to study that is a very simple concept that we need to study crawling and coiling so these are all the five topics we are going to cover in unit 2 unit 2 also we are concentrating on induction machine so if we cover these five topics then unit 2 will completed so first we will take this starting method okay why starters are required for induction motor that is the first question what will happen if you directly give voltage to the induction motor without using any starter the answer is very similar to the dc motor so without using starter if you give voltage directly to the induction motor the induction motor draws a very large current during starting that will spoil the induction motor winding so in order to reduce this high starting current starters are employed during starting time so during running time the role of starters are not there similar to the DC motor. Now we need to understand why the induction motor is drawing a very high starting current during starting. Okay. To see here, I have written here. Starters are used to reduce high initial starting current. So only during starting time, starters are active. During running time of induction motor, starters are that you starters are there but it is not doing any work why starters are needed only during the starting time why it is not needed during the running time so this we can understand from the equivalent circuit of the induction motor you take the equivalent circuit referring to this data set so this is the equivalent circuit i have shown here you have four resistors r1 e x1 e rl dash now during the starting time what is the value of slip the value of slip is 1 you substitute the value of slip in the load resistance so what is happening to the load resistance the load resistance is becoming zero if the resistance is zero it means that the rotor side will act as a short circuit so the induction machine will be acting as a short circuit machine it means that during short circuit condition the motor draws a very very large amount of current from the source so that will damage the induction motor winding so you have this source current you have the source current this is is and you have the no load current i not you have the rotor current i to r dash this resistance no is becoming zero during starting time because the slip is equal to 1 so it means that it is short so under short circuit condition it is obvious that the machine will draw a very very large amount of current from the source so this will damage the winding of the induction motor so in order to overcome this problem we need to have starters to the induction motor right to reduce this high initial starting current so this is happening only during the starting time but during running time why it is not happening it is not happening because the slip is reducing because only during the starting time the value of slip is 1 during running time the slip is reducing from 1 so when the slip is reducing automatically you will be having the effective load resistance so that will maintain the current to the required value 
this is very similar to the dc motor in the dc motor vacuum of is acting as a regulator but in the case of induction motor slip is acting as the regulator that is why i have written here under running condition slip reduces so that it regulates the current so only during the starting time the help of starters are required but during the running time the starters help are not required right this is very similar to the dc motor any doubt here right so now you have various types of starters in induction motor these are also various types of starters starters are broadly classified into two types in order to reduce the high starting current one group is data side starter another group is rotor side starter okay so data side starter in that group you have primary resistance starter you have primary reactor starter you have auto transformer starter then direct online starter that is only suitable for low rated induction motor that is why i have written that in red color then coming to the rotor side starter it is applicable only for spring induction motor in the rotor side starter you have only one type that is called as rotor resistance starter okay so theta side starters are applicable for both full gauge and spring induction motor but the rotor side starter is applicable only for spring induction motor and direct online starter that is suitable only for the low rated motor the current is less than 1 ampere right is that clear so before going to see the different types of starter we need to derive one equation for the starter so that equation is called as governing equation for any type of starter okay so that relationship we need to or that equation we need to see now based on that equation you may get problem what is the governing equation for starter so this is how it follows so that is why i have written here derivation for starter it is common for all types of starter and this derivation no it is giving the relationship between starting torque and full load torque because initial time you are uh, you are using starter and after some time during running condition you are not using starter so what is the relationship between starting torque and full load torque so that relationship we need to derive now okay i again repeat so during the starting time we are using starter during running time the starter car passive so in order to understand this operation we need to develop relationship between starting torque and full load torque okay so starting torque is a function of full load torque so what is that function f we need to derive now so for that again you need to take the power flow equation so you take this is the rotor this is the rotor and p2 that is the power input to the rotor and pm that is the power output from the rotor and this is the copper law okay so p2 we know that it is 2 by ns p by 60 this is equation 1 so from this all these are constant so the torque is directly proportional to p2 you assume this equation as 2 and what is my p2 from power equation rotor copper law by let so you substitute this p2 in terms of rotor copper loss by slip torque then i will get proportional to rotor copper loss by slip what is my rotor copper loss please take 
the approximate equivalent circuit referring to this data site so 3 i2r dash the whole square into r2r dash r2 dash 3 i2r dash the whole square into r2 dash divided by s so here 3 is constant r2 dash that is the rotor resistance referring to this data site this is also constant so torque is becoming proportional to i2r dash the whole square divided by slip you assume this equation as six so now here the rotor current referring to this data is proportional to i1 the rotor current referring to the data is proportional to i1 i1 is the data current okay so here this is the rotor current referring to data both are proportional how much amount of current the machine is drawing from the source so based on that current only the rotor current will be decided so this is the rotor current referred to data that is i2 r dash this is the data current don't worry with this derivation i will complete the today's class this is the data current okay so now i2 r dash is proportional to i1 so the torque equation i can write is proportional to i1 squared by s so this i2 r dash so this i2 r dash this i2 r dash i am writing in terms of i1 so that is this equation so torque is proportional to torque is proportional to i1 squared by s so during starting time during starting time slip is equal to 1 when slip is equal to 1 then the t becomes tsp and i1 becomes isp so that is the torque during starting time and that is the current during starting time when the slip is equal to 1 so if you substitute here when the slip becomes 1 then t becomes tsp t becomes tsp and i1 becomes isp when the slip is equal to 1 so tsp is proportional to square of the starting current i am getting the relationship like that that i am using it as equation a and the starting current the starting current i can write x time short circuit current then we use starter okay the starting current i can write x times short circuit current right what do you mean by short circuit current what do you mean by short circuit current short circuit current is nothing but short circuit current short circuit current is nothing but when the load resistance becomes zero during starting time the load resistance becomes zero so that is the short circuit current so when we use starter the starting current it becomes x time short circuit current and x is nothing but it is a fraction by which the current is reduced to using starter right it is the fraction by which the current is reduced to using starter suppose if you don't use starter then x becomes 1 if x becomes 1 then the starting current directly becomes equal to the short circuit current this is dangerous to the piston winding so this current we are reducing by adding starter by x time so x is the fraction by which the current is reduced using the starter isp is the short circuit current during starting time so if we use starter the starting current can be reduced by 
yet time. If you don't use starter, then starting current becomes directly equal to the short circuit current during starting. Now you substitute this ISC, uh, ISC here. So ISC is nothing but yet time ISC. I am writing the starting current in terms of short circuit current. So ISC is nothing but yet time ISC. So here I have written. So starting torque is proportional to x square i square s c. Okay, x square i square s c. So this is the starting torque equation. So this is the starting torque equation in terms of short circuit current. Starting torque equation. Starting torque equation. Now you go to equation seven. What is this equation? This is my equation. The torque is proportional to I one squared by n. Now this equation can be written for full load condition or rated condition, right? So during running condition. Or operating point condition, or full load condition, or the rated condition, rated condition. So that is what here I am indicated. You take the torque slip graph. So this TSP that is applicable to this point, starting point, and this TFL that is the full load torque. Or that is the operating point torque that is applicable for this point. That is the operating point of the machine. So I can write T as T full load proportional to. So under full load condition, current becomes full load current. I F L whole square slip becomes full load slip. So S becomes S F. So this is the starting torque. Relationship, and this is the full load torque relationship. You divide these two equations. If you divide starting torque divided by full load torque, I am getting the equation as x squared I F C by I F L the whole squared into S F L. So now from this equation, what is my starting torque? Starting torque is nothing but you bring this full load torque here. So starting torque is nothing but x squared I F C by I F L the whole squared into S F L into T F L, right? So here E F C is the starting torque. E F C is the starting torque. I F C is the short circuit current during starting. Short circuit current. During starting, I F L, that is the full load current or rated current, full load or or operating point current. This is the rated current, and this is the full load slip or rated slip. This is the full load torque or rated torque. Right. So this is the relationship between starting torque and full load torque when we use starter. So during running time, x becomes one. So in this mode, starters are passive. Starters are passive. During starting time, x is the fraction by which the current is reducing. Always x will be lesser than one. Okay. So during this time, starters are active.
what we need to understand from this is that during starting time when starters are used the starting torque no is little reducing but during running time there is no problem in starting torque because already we have come to the operating point running condition right so how much percentage of the starting torque is reduced during the starting time when we use starter that we can understand from this equation starting torque is equal to x square isc by ifl the whole square sfl into efl because if the machine is not at all having the starting torque the machine will not start at all every machine should have some starting torque right but when we add starter during starting time the starting torque is reduced it can be reduced to a smaller extent but it cannot be reduced to a larger extent if it is reduced to a very larger extent the machine will not start at all so that can be understood using this relationship so this equation is applicable for any type of starter so next next class we will see different types of starter till now any doubt anybody is having if you have any doubt you can ask me any notation any relationship it is not understandable how we are writing this how we got this it is clear shall we wind up the class yes so thank you all we will meet in the next class